Hey everybody, Mark from Rams Up here. I got Paul Wallia on for another episode of Wallia's World. Letting <laughs> Paul uh, speak to a few things. And uh, hey, first of all, how you doing, Paul? Fantastic, fantastic. Looking for the summer. Uh, already hit the beach a couple of times. Had the air show out here on Long Island. Uh, keeping it tight here in the Beast Coast. Yeah, you know, um, we're in our June gloom season here in California, the coast, man. I see the sun on occasion, but waiting waiting for it to warm up. I think we're, we may have hit 70 once and uh, hoping to get into the low 70s this week. That's along the coast. It's a little warmer inland, but summer is just kind of teasing us at this point. So this is what we're going to do this episode. We're going to do two things. Paul is going to share three drafts that he liked, three teams that he's going to touch on. He really liked their drafts. Uh, a couple of them will be no surprise. These teams draft really well year in and year out. And then at the end, we're going to do something uh, for fun. Good time of year to do fun stuff on the YouTube channel. We're going to talk about our five favorite Rams of all time. Paul and I, we have not shared who our five favorite players are. So it's going to be fun. See how this goes. Uh, could go a lot of different ways. We're not talking about our five greatest Rams. Uh, that would be probably not as entertaining as this is going to be, I think, our five favorite Rams. And uh, we'll get into that after we get through these drafts, these three drafts we like. So let me go and add our the first draft that Paul really liked is the Chiefs 2024 draft. And there it is for you. Uh, talk us through this, uh, Paul. What did you like about this draft? So, you know, when you come off a Super Bowl and you get to walk away with the players that the Chiefs walked away with, you have to give them a solid A grade. Uh, you and I had talked about, you know, pulling off that trade for Xavier Worthy uh, with Buffalo of all teams. Uh, you know, uh, that was something really noteworthy. But, you know, that's something they wanted to do. They they wanted to sort of replace uh, their loss of speed at wide receiver with a player that was a true game breaker. Uh, Xavier Worthy is known, as we know, the fastest 40 time in combine history. So uh, whether or not, you know, his uh, slight of, uh, you know, that his slight frame is going to play against him in the NFL uh, remains to be seen. But, you know, he's a competitive player. I think it's a good roll of the dice for the Chiefs. Um, the one of the reasons I loved their draft, because if you look at the names after that, Mark, they're going to look familiar, a bunch of Puka power picks and some of our favorite players that we used to mock my favorite offensive lineman in the draft, Kingsley. So All right. One of right. my favorites. And we had talked about him at length, uh, from BYU. Um, I think he's just going to be a beast at offensive tackle. We had, uh, right after him, the tight end that I said was going to be just uh, another beast, uh, Jared Wiley, the kid from TCU, who was tied, I think, with eight uh, touchdowns, which was number one uh, with two other players in college football um, amongst all tight ends. The safety that I think was probably one of the steals of the draft at 133, Jaden Hicks. This kid is an absolute lights-out hitter, uh, great ball skills. Um, I think he is going to be an eventual starter in that secondary. Um, at some point, they're going to find, you know, whether it's this season, next season, wherever, they got to get this kid on the field. Um, the center that we talked about, Hunter Norzad from Penn State, 159, a very talented, intelligent center, the kind of player that winds up sticking on your roster for a decade. Great pickup in round five, Mark, of all rounds, right? Those late round picks really uh, speak to uh, your, the team scouting department and how well uh, they find prospects that fit their system. Uh, Kamal Haddon, great zone player corner. Um, he dropped a little bit because of, you know, didn't really have a standout season, but I think he's got a lot of potential, particularly in a zone scheme. He has to work on his press skills, but overall, I think this was a great draft. They definitely um, built some depth into their roster with some solid players and players that can contribute right away if they are pressed into action. Got to give the Chiefs an A on this draft. 
Yeah, we had talked about Hunter Norzad, and um, and then we drafted Bo Limmer, and there's some similarities there, right? I think you know Norzad, obviously a higher rated player, but uh, a guy guys that just add flexibility to that interior, right? Uh, yeah, so absolutely. And I think the player that's really going to stand out in this draft is going to be Kingsley. I think that he is a vastly underrated lineman. Um, I think he might he could even start out early as guard. But I think eventually he'll be a tackle, and he's going to be a very, very solid tackle in the NFL. Okay, good stuff. Let's move on to our the next team that you uh, you're going to give kudos to for their draft, and that's the Chargers, crosstown rivals. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm always like biting my tongue and having to say this, but yeah, I was actually really impressed with the the way they pulled out this draft. I was curious to see which way Harbaugh was going to go. Um, but if you take a look at every pick, very well calculated, uh, very purposeful, and very high talent threshold. So right off the bat, to be able to get you know the tackle that they wanted, uh, we all know about the statements that offensive linemen can be offensive weapons. Love that statement. You know I love the trenches. So to walk away with Alt, uh, a rock-solid prospect, uh, arguably the, the best tackle in the draft by many people, um, and then to follow up with your favorite player, Lad McConkey, right? And you know, the Chargers need some help at a wide receiver. Listen, they got a franchise quarterback, and any wide receiver help is only going to be a win win scenario. And this kid is just like I said, you know, forget the scouting reports, he's always open. Turn on any game, Lad McConkey's always open. He creates separation with crisp routes, he has great hands, he's tough as nails. Um, quiet competitor, team player, loves to block. You know, what else can you say? He's a great fit for Harbaugh's uh, team philosophy. And then smart move, going back to his squad, bringing out Junior Colson, the linchpin in the middle of that defense, uh, monster linebacker, um, you know, knows the system, um, you know, tough as nails, you know, brings his lunch to uh, work with him every day. Uh, goes all out for four uh, four quarters. Got to love this pick. You know, real purposeful uh, team culture pick. And then the play that we had talked about uh, from Alabama. I mean, this kid, this defensive tackle, he was number three in terms of run defense grade uh, for D ends and D tackles, Mark, um, for Bama. So just another great pick, man. Fits their defense, fits their scheme you know, shuts down the run. And I, I honestly think he's got much more pass rush potential than people are giving him credit for. Um, Cam Hart is the player that stands out for me. To get Cam Hart at round five, when many people had him as high as round three, that's a great value pick. And I really like this player. He's a solid tackler, plays the zone really well, um, you know, can hang with the speed receivers. A lot of people knock his lack of speed, but I got to tell you, when you watch him on film, and the kid can play. So I think it's a, a, a great pickup in round five. And the same thing with Still. Kid's got a lot of potential out of University of Maryland. I think that was a solid pick. When you pick up two corners that can compete like that in round five, that's just great value. Uh, round six, you know, what could I say? Kamani Vidal, that was that running back, that rocked up running back. Um I think he's going to be uh, a great uh, running back in the NFL, solid contributor. And and look at that running back room that San Diego's got uh, got going. They're, they're going to run the rock, man. They're going to follow uh, what worked at Michigan. Harbaugh's going to run the ball. I think they got J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards, and now you got Vidal. Man, they're going to rotate uh, those three backs, and they're just going to pound on teams. So – I really like what they did, and they also picked up that wide receiver from Michigan, uh, Cornelius Johnson, uh, solid role player for uh, the Wolverines. Uh, Harbaugh, uh, you know, loves the kid for character as well as performance. Loves to block, um, good deep deep speed, solid receiver. Um, so overall, I got to give this team an A. Great job with this draft, getting the players that they wanted that fit their system and their philosophy. Yeah, I saw someone uh, commenting on the Chargers, not necessarily about the draft, but it was obviously tied to the draft. 
and he insinuated that Harbaugh is going to build a defense uh, full of angry, I think he may have used the word vicious, uh, hard-hitting defenders that are just going to inflict pain on the opposition. Now, I don't know if these guys, uh, you got four guys on defense here. I don't know if that's uh, if that's how you characterize these guys, but it'll be interesting to see if that that's what Harbaugh does with this defense. I mean, a lot of teams speak to that, but, you know, um, I think Harbaugh, according to this commentator, and I don't remember who it was, that's where the Chargers are headed under Harbaugh on the defensive side of the ball anyways. Well, especially in this league now, if you're if you're going to win in the NFL in today's game, two things have to happen. You have to be able to get to the passer, right, because you, it's a passing league. You, then that's probably the best way to play pass defense, um, or if you want to say the first half of playing pass defense. So – um, just, you know, being able to get all these coverage guys is not enough, right? Because the offenses are so far ahead of the defense in, in many respects. So you have to be able to get after it. So, and this is a great start. They've, you know, this is the foundation of what they're trying to do. They have a lot of high character guys on this. If you take a look at this uh, list of picks, but these are not just like, you know, plotting, you know, lunch pail type of guys. These, these are some talented players that they added to their roster. So well done. Okay, and the next uh, team whose draft you want to call out, and again, no surprise, Steelers seem to get it done every year at draft time. Talk talk to us about this one. Every year, every year, under the radar with their draft picks. And, and Mark, take a look at this, right? You got three offensive linemen, right, in their first uh, five picks. Uh, Let's just start out with one of my favorites, Troy Fatanu. I mean, listen, this kid could play guard. This kid could play tackle. I think he's going to wind up a tackle. Uh, this kid is just a great player. He's a great team leader. Look at look at what he look at his resume from uh, uh, up in Washington, man. He was just a joy to watch. And the kid is an absolute beast. So great pickup. Fits the Steelers' uh, attitude. Um, they wanted to build that offensive line. This is a kid that will have no problem playing from day one. Uh, another one of my favorites, Zach Frazier, the kid from West Virginia. I mean, this kid is just an absolute mauler in the middle, Mark. This kid, uh, the number two center in this draft, and let me tell you, this kid can play football. Watch this kid play. This kid loves to play, and he is just nasty. And he has great technique. He knows what he's doing. Uh, he's played a ton of games, has a lot of experience. I love these first two picks. Uh, round three, they had two picks. Um, interesting picks, but I think, I think definitely, uh, definite home runs, Roman candle Wilson, cause he can light it up. Um, this kid, you know, his big play after big play at Michigan. Um, they just could not cover this kid, um, at some of the showcases. Uh, I think it was at the senior bowl. I mean, everybody was saying they just could not cover it. So, um, I think it's a great pick for the Steelers. Uh, Peyton Wilson is the linebacker that everybody was talking about. Has that injury history, um, but is just uber talented. Can run like the wind and hits like a ton of bricks. Um, has a just a nasty attitude in the Steelers three four scheme. This kid is going to thrive. This is going to be the pick that everybody's going to be talking about. If he can stay healthy and that knee is sound, this is the pick that everybody's going to be talking about. Uh, Mason McCormick, just a rock solid guard. The kind of guard that you that you bring on your team, and all of a sudden, before you know it, he's starting. Right in a couple seasons, he's going to be starting. So Mason McCormick, one of my favorites, really under the radar draft pick. Uh, love that one. And Logan Lee, just a typical three four end out of Iowa. Loves to play football. Tough as nails. Um, great size, six five two eighty five. Um, people were raving about him at the Shrine Bowl. Uh, just everything about every player that they picked up just screams uh, Steelers. Great draft. This is the way it's done. You draft players that fit your system, and the Steelers know what they're doing every year. This is a great draft. Got to give them an A. Yeah, and Roman Wilson, he um, he made a statement in, during the draft period about how much he loves to block and that was a reason where I think a lot of Ram fans were thinking he may be a, a target for our team. 
you know, about that spot, third or fourth round, Roman Wilson, the wide receiver out of Michigan, but he goes to the Steelers instead. And we talked about a lot of these guys in our yep. lead up to the draft, uh, Fuatanu, Frazier, Wilson, uh, both Wilsons. And I know we talked about Mason McCormick. I feel like South Dakota State, I got to look up the numbers. Maybe I'll add it here at the end. Um, how many How many of their players got drafted? It's a crazy. They are really producing a lot of NFL players at this point. It's impressive. It really is. It's turning out to be a really impressive program. Yeah. And another reminder, who do we have from South Dakota State on our team? Christian Roseboom. Roseboom. Yeah. Here comes the boom. Yeah. Okay. That's a good summation. Three drafts we really liked. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll, and maybe basically a, all in the AFC. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I hesitate to do drafts that we don't like because we hate to show throw shade yeah. on players and it's hard to go through and give uh give teams bad grades without talking shade on you know these young football players so i don't know if we're going to do that one thing we are going to do i've been looking forward to this um this is great conversation uh over a beer we're not going to do it over a beer we're gonna, just going to do it right here and now uh paul and i are going to share our five favorite players of all time Ram players, and these are not necessarily the greatest players. Um, I, I was chatting with Paul, trying to characterize how my approach is. It's you know, you're the guy you want to have a beer with, the guy who you just you know you love their style of play, you love their personality, and some of these guys I'm going to mention. My honorable mentions, actually, guys that when I was uh, playing football down at the park, tackle football with uh, with the gang uh, on Saturday afternoons, the guys that. The guy I pretended to be, you know, that I I tried to emulate, and uh, that's where, that's where we're going to do this. And then we'll walk five through one our favorite our favorite Rams of all time. You want to go first on your honorable mentions, or you want me to go? Uh, so Ram Nation, I got to tell you, Mark came up with this great idea. It, it was a really it's a phenomenal idea. The hardest part was we were like, should we do ten? Should we do five? For the sake of time, we did five. And, and Mark, to be honest with you, when I made my list, it was like 22 players. It was like yeah. unbelievable, you know? But, you know, we love the Rams. And, you know, when you're a kid, think about it. You know, from the time that you're a kid till now, there's so many players. So I'll have to be honest. So to sort of control for, like, recency effect, I tried to leave off anybody that was, like, st uh, currently still active. Aaron Donald just retired. So he would definitely would have been on my list. But to be fair to the other guys, I'm going to keep him as an honorable mention for now because once he and staff retire, they're going to take spots up on my top five because uh, staff is my favorite Ram quarterback of all time. Sorry, Kurt. But my honorable mentions are uh, Kurt Warner, um, Deacon Jones. Um, for those of you out there in Ram Nation, if you haven't seen it, that NFL film – Tribute to the fearsome foursome. If you're not a Ram fan, watch that. You will be a Ram fan. Um, Aaron Donald, um, Fletch, London Fletcher, uh, Matt Stafford, Cooper Cup, Kevin Green, Ricky Prohl, Kevin Carter, Wendell Tyler, Dennis Tara. The list just goes on and on and on. I had so many players on this list. Um, and just, just goes to show how much, you know, I love that squad. And, and not just, you know, the superstars, but uh, the role players. I have, like, a, a real special place in my heart for those role players like Ricky Prohl. That catch at Tampa, to me, is one of the greatest Ram catches of all time. Um, I also had, of course, uh, the Rev, uh, Isaac Bruce on here. So um, my honorable mentions, those were my honorable mentions. Yeah, and just for everyone's uh, awareness, uh, Paul and I agreed that we will not comment. Uh, we will not reveal, as I reveal my honorable mentions, he will not state if any of them are in his top five. And likewise, I'll do the same for for uh, Paul. Now, I came up, my sh list is a little bit shorter. Honorable mentions, I have four. I, I probably, you know, um, I just had a, a maybe a little bit higher bar than you, and that's that's fair enough. And in my top five, I did include one active player. So hopefully you're okay with that. One guy just, I went around around with with this guy and I said, you know what? 
He's one of my top five favorite players, and he's active, so I rolled with it. My honorable mentions, though, uh, my first one is Chris Long. And the oh. reason, and, and I think Chris Long, I've actually liked him more since he left the Rams and since he retired. He is so intelligent, and he's so active in positive ways. And, you know, uh, I if, if he, if I didn't, I feel like I know him very well already, and a lot of these guys I'm going to talk about later are guys I, I'd like to have a beer with. But Chris Long, I don't think I need to have a beer with him because, you know, I listen to his podcast on occasion. I see his interviews and I, I see uh, uh, all the things he's doing in the community. Uh, and, and I feel like I know him pretty well already. So, But I do just love him as a person. Um, another guy I included on my honorable mentions is Nolan Cromwell. Great. And, yeah, the reason I included him... And this may sound silly, but there were times down at the park, uh, you know, I could play a little bit of football. I mean, I never, never uh, had thoughts of playing at a high level. Absolutely not. But uh, I love to play safety, you know, play that that floating DB and try to, uh, you know, be a little bit of a ball hawk. And I kind of probably pretended I was Nolan Cromwell a few times there. One of the best uh, safeties of the 1970s. Number 21. Yep. Yeah. And and another guy, Jack Youngblood, you know, just, you know, <laughs> how can you not like him? It's so tough, so salty, and, you know, a Hall of Fame defensive end. Um, he, he got on my list pretty easily. And the last guy, and, you know, he, he was my last addition to this, and that's Todd Gurley. And... I just think Todd Gurley and his prime, um, uh, he was just so electric. His it's for, for the reason Todd Gurley is on this list has, I hate to say this, has nothing to do with his personality or off the field stuff, any of that, just watching him play in that like two, three year period when he was in his prime, it was something else. So those are my top three. Those are my four honorable mentions. So I'll kick off number five, if you'd like me to. Go right ahead. My fifth favorite Ram, and he is the one active player I have on here, and it violates your guidelines, Paul, but so hopefully you're okay with this. And, That's you know, cool. I, Puka Nakua is, yeah. is already, uh, I mean, you know, maybe it's a little early. There's tons of recency bias. Guilty as charged, but... His personality, his playing style, there is absolutely not one iota of that guy or anything about that guy that anybody can dislike. His his attitude, his personality, his playing style, his skill level, just love the guy. And I think he is going to earn, a, earn the Rams a lot of new fans over the next couple of years if he hasn't already. So Puka's my number five. Uh, how can you argue with that? That's a great pick. Uh, my nephew is only uh, five. Uh, no, no, he just turned six. So, uh, and he loves Puka Nakua. He just absolutely, he wants the the Puka jersey already. So that's just a great pick. I mean, he's just, uh, he's the kind of player that just can become the face of a franchise overnight, man. He's just a great pick. Absolutely. Yeah, I think I think he's already a type uh, a player that you know if if you walked up to a random football fan in um, Minnesota and you know you could name off twenty Rams and they'd be like, huh, eh, who's that? Uh, they're gonna know Puka, you know, they're gonna know Cooper Cup and Matthew Stafford, but they're, they're everybody everybody already knows about Puka, so that's a good thing. So who's your number five? Yeah, so I went back to like you gave me like a a, a great criterion, like who's the who's the guy that you would want to like sit down and chat with. And I said, who's the guy I would want as a neighbor? Like a guy next door we could sit down and just hang out at the barbecue and have uh, become friends. And I said, man, who is the, the guy that when I was a kid just was like the man? Big, bad Jackie, Jackie Slater. I picked Jackie Slater as my number five, man. He's one of my favorites all time. Um he went to Jackson State, and this is one of the reasons I really, really loved him, was that he he was recruited to Jackson State by Walter Payton. Walter Payton, he blocked for Walter Payton, and then came to the NFL and eventually wound up a blocking for Eric Dickerson. You talk about, I don't think that's just coincidence, man. So um, 
he was just one of the greatest because uh, a lot of the Ram uh, greats never really finished their careers with the Rams. But to have a player that played 20 seasons for the Rams um, and holds the record, he's the only player in NFL history to play not just with the same team, but represent three different cities, L.A., Anaheim, and St. Louis. So he still holds the Rams record, 259 games. Um, he was part of that phenomenal offensive line you and I were talking about, Ken Hill, Dennis Hara, Irv Pankey, Doug Smith, and, you know, they paved the way for Dickerson, rightfully so. He was uh, Dickerson's presenter at the Hall of Fame presentation in 1999. I mean, just a model of consistency. Um, but I will say this, just a model of class and just you know everything that the Rams embody. But he was also the guy that started the brawl against the Jets when Mark Gassino did the sack dance. So I want to just throw that out there. For Ram Nation, if you haven't seen that, you got to watch that. Mark Gasson was doing his sack dance after sacking the Rams quarterback, and Big Bad Jackie went after him and started a bench clearing brawl. It was awesome. Yeah, I was, when I was doing my top uh, 50 Rams of all time, I was looking at, um, you know, trying to collect a little bit of data on everybody. And I, obviously, Jackie Slater is listed there. I, I forget where I had him. And I was, I was looking at his, uh, beginning and ending career dates. And I was like, okay, 10 years ago, wait a second. That's 20 years, yeah. 20, 20 years of offensive line for the Rams and high character guy, uh, all pro performer um, and, you know, a Ram for life. So that's a solid pick. And, and you stole uh, the other thing I was going to mention that fight. And uh, I think Jackie's point was, are, are you kidding me? I shut you down for 74 snaps or whatever it was, and yeah. and you win one snap and you're going to do a dance, not, not happening. So that was... Uh, not on his watch. Yeah, right. Okay, I'll let you go first this time. Who's your number four? Uh, number four, man, since I was a kid. So um, uh, I've been really lucky the to be able to watch three magical seasons for the Rams the 99 season, obviously the most recent Super Bowl victory as well. But that 79 season to be 10 years old and watch the Rams make that run to the Super Bowl, albeit they did lose to the Steelers. But it was uh, Ram Nation. That was just a phenomenal season all around. One of the players that uh, one of my honorable mentions that I didn't shout out was uh, Vincent Anthony Farragamo, the quarterback that took over uh, late in that season, that magical season. Um I picked Jack Youngblood, the captain. Jack Youngblood is my number four. He played his entire career with the Rams. Uh, he holds a franchise record for, uh, for playoff starts, most consecutive games played, 201. He was one of the true NFL Ironmen at the time. He played D end at about 250 pounds, 245. Um, he's only missed one game since his junior year of college to his final year in the NFL, 1969 through 1984. And what was really special about this, one of the gutsiest performances I've ever seen, in that Dallas playoff game, Mark, you probably remember, they cut him and they uh, broke a bone in his right uh, right leg, uh, the fibula. And I remember them talking about this after the game. He argued with the trainer and the team doctor. He said, tape it up. I, I, I can go back out there. Ram Nation, he showed up for the next game against Tampa Bay. <laughs> And played the entire game nine nothing. He played and he played in the Super Bowl. So uh, he was the defensive captain for the Rams, um, and we used to call him the captain, the cap. Uh, he played. Uh, he also they used to call him the John Wayne of football because he was so right. tough. He had 151 and a half sacks, six most in NFL history. He went to the Hall of Fame obviously in 2001. He was a defensive captain for the Rams, Ram Nation, 1977 to 1984. His number is retired. He's in the College Football Hall of Fame. He's also in the University of Florida Hall of Fame. Um, just watching this kid as a uh, watching this uh, this guy as a ten year old man, model of character, leadership, and dedication. And Mark, you know what I think is really interesting in 1999 when the Rams won the Super Bowl, their dominant defensive lineman was also a Florida Gator, Kevin Carter. Right. Yeah. And, so. um, you know, he was paired with uh, Fred Dreyer there for a while. Yeah. Uh, two of the best bookend uh, defensive ends in the history of the National Football League, I think. 
And, you know, if, if you were to close your eyes and imagine what the perfect hard ass NFL defensive lineman would look like, uh, you'd probably picture Jack Youngblood. That guy, I, I think I have a, a photo here somewhere of him with there's blood on his jersey, <laughs> uh, sweat, and just, man, just a guy you do not want to tangle with. Yeah, he's a great one. And he was on my honorable mention, so we were kind of on the same page there yeah, with Jack Youngblood. There's a great no. there's a great little uh, mini film on him called Heart of a Champion that Ram Nation you have to watch. It's, it's brief. It's only a couple of minutes, but... It just just basically summarized everything we're talking about there and just these wonderful visual images. There's one of him like covered in mud. Remember that iconic photo of him covered yeah. in mud with the right. 85? Oh, man, just awesome. Yeah, right. Okay, my number four is AD, Aaron Donald. And, yeah. you know, it, it's just with Aaron, it's just about it, – it. it's just so great to have, in my opinion – the greatest defensive player in the history of the National Football League, played his entire career with the Rams. And, you know, there's still some naysayers out there about him, uh, and it just drives me crazy. But um, just watching him play, and I I was talking to my special assistant about Aaron Donald. I was kind of bouncing some ideas off of him, and he said, you know, there there were games, years, where, you know, when you're watching the Rams on defense, you're watching Aaron Donald. That's all you're doing. You're just watching Aaron Donald. Forget about the other 10 guys. Just watch Aaron Donald for your own uh, entertainment. And, um, yeah, it's just just the fact that the greatest defensive player in the history of the league is a Ram, and that, that by default makes him one of my top five. So he's my number four, Aaron Donald. I will say this for a, for a lot of those naysayers. Aaron Donald, if you look at the left side and the right side, he did a lot of that on his own like a lot of the other players on our list that, you know, uh, didn't get a lot of help, but, you know, never complained, always did what he had to do, always sacrificed. Um, and then uh, look how he closed out San Francisco and look how he closed out the Super Bowl. You know, this Aaron Donald is not only a Ram through and through, but he's one of the all-time greats and cannot be argued. Yeah, and just the way he trained, the way he prepared, um Yeah, something else. We'll never forget Aaron Donald. Okay, I'll go first with my number three. And my number three, I mean, I just love Isaac Bruce. I I just love him to death. And, you know, he was uh, one of the last uh, L.A. Rams, went to St. Louis, and just so consistent and such a pleasant guy, team guy, 100% team guy. I've talked about this before. You know, if you want your son to to emulate an athlete, I would say don't don't emulate an athlete. There's so many, so much. Uh, uh, there, there's better options for your child uh, as far as a hero to emulate. But if you want want to pick a sports figure to emulate, Isaac Bruce has got to be at the top of your list. I mean, just to, the way he performed and his character and the way. Uh, you know, he treated his teammates, team first, 100%. And, uh, yeah, I just love the guy. I, I I, will say that I dropped him from number two to number three. My number two bumped him. You know, I, I should bring it up, but I will real quickly. I wasn't thrilled with his Hall of Fame speech. I was a little disappointed in that, where he started calling out some of the uh, the scouts. But still, that, w- that was his one uh low moment in my mind but still man i love isaac bruce and uh i think i i think i still have his jersey around here somewhere i haven't worn it in a while he's the my quiet number assassin isaac right. bruce. yeah I, n- I never forget that story where i don't know if you remember this or if you've heard this where um in tory holt's rookie year he cost isaac bruce a touchdown because he was uh illegal motion or something and he and he uh and then on the next play Tory Holt scored a touchdown and he went up and apologized to Isaac Bruce and Isaac Bruce looked at him like are you crazy I, I don't care who scored the touchdown we got we got the six points that's all that matters yeah and, and that, that's the type of guy he was and you know it's it, this segment is so phenomenal Ram Nation and we really hope that when it's all said and done you share your top five not based on stats or anything but just like on memories like what we're sharing. 
And I remember that Super Bowl when that when Kurt Warner threw that bomb and all Isaac right. ran under it. And it, I remember all of us just jumping off the sofa. We were like, yeah. And it's just like that memory will never fade, man. And that that number 80 is definitely iconic. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was that's obviously one of the you know, if you're gonna list top five plays in Rams history, that's gonna be up there. It's gotta yeah. be up there. Yeah. Um, okay, so who's your number three? So I was like, you know, this one player, man, I really respect for multiple reasons. Number one, in the dark days when, when the Rams weren't really very good, this guy just managed to perform. But he's also one of those guys that, like you were saying, I'd pick up the phone and say, come on, bring over the kids. We're going to have a barbecue, right? And uh, I went with the beast, Steven Jackson, right? Um, one of the most underappreciated, underrated, underrated running backs of all time. Doesn't matter the team. Um, he was with the Rams from 2004 to 2012. He never played in a playoff game as a starter. Can you imagine that? Unbelievable. Uh, all pro 2006 and 09. Um, he's the all time leading rusher for the Rams also for rushing attempts. But what I think is really, really impressive as bad as the Rams were, eight seasons in a row, he went over 1,000 rushing yards, Mark. That's just unbelievable. I mean, and we've talked about it. The the video footage of him carrying guys five, six yards downfield, it's just unbelievable. He never complained, just showed up and just, you know, the human battering ram, as we used to call him. Uh, and that one year um, where he led the NFL – 23, 34 yards from scrimmage. Unbelievable. 90 passes he caught, and he rushed for 1,528 yards. Just unbelievable. But what I thought I really loved about this guy, Mark, he fumbled only 23 times on 2,396 rushing attempts. That's unbelievable. Less than 1% of his offensive touches did he actually fumble. And his last two seasons, he didn't fumble at all. So – Unbelievable. Um, grand total of 13,462 yards with the Rams. And I said this before, the Rams got to find a way. If they win another Super Bowl, they got to make sure this guy gets a ring. Maybe have him come out of retirement, give him one hand up and take a knee. Do something, man, because this guy is the ultimate warrior. What he did for the franchise, um, he kept them relevant. And I, I will tell you this one. Uh, it was right around the time of fantasy football was really, really prevalent. I used to always draft Steven Jackson. But what was really, really great, uh, when my son used to play Madden, they had these um, – uh, there was like this uh, video segment where they showed all the top players would come out and do like these 30-second snippets of their runouts. And my daughter was like five, and she went to kindergarten, and she said, my favorite player is Steven Jackson, right, because she saw the video when my son would play Madden, and she just absolutely loved it. So uh, Steven Jackson has a special place, man. This is what it's all about, man. Players like Steven Jackson. Sacrifice. Yeah, yeah and it's hard to argue against uh, SJ39. And, and I, could, I could talk an hour about him and what he meant to this franchise. And uh, my, one of my favorites as well. And it's hard to say anything. What can you say bad about Steven Jackson? I mean, yeah, right. he, <laughs> he was probably... The biggest nightmare, the worst nightmare a defensive back could have in that era, uh, Steven Jackson rolling down the field at you. Uh, great receiver, great running back, obviously, running the ball. Uh, super high character. And what drives me crazy about Steven Jackson, and, you know, we all, us Ram, Rams Nation, needs to speak out on his behalf more because he belongs in the Hall of Fame. It's not no, no, no. even... Uh, uh, even probably even more so than some of the guys, other guys on on the waiting list. And if he was on a uh, a more of a marquee franchise, or if the Rams had made a couple playoff runs, there'd be no doubt. And and it and I I'm so I feel so strongly that you know whether your team got to the Super Bowl, won playoff games, or whatever. It, I mean, it matters a little bit as far as the Hall of Fames regard it, but. You got to think beyond that. You got to look at the big picture and look at some of these players. And there's probably players and other teams that get overlooked as well that just had stellar careers 
and, and despite the fact that they're you know they're the guys around them, the guys around them weren't really that good and uh Stephen Jackson's a perfect example of that but the best running back of his era in my opinion and uh yeah I love that guy too and I agree with you. And I think that's something like the Rams organization has to be more vocal about, about his being, his contributions being acknowledged and him being part of the, a more uh, active, uh, I guess, if you want to say involvement with the organization. Uh, Cause I think that's important. And I think it's important to the, to the young Ram fans to know that, you know, these, these are the players that we're talking about. Cause we got to see them, you know, right. you know, it's one thing to, to learn about the legends, but it's one thing to see them, play it so you could really speak to their contribution so i agree with you 100 percent. okay number two i'll go first this time and this is the guy that you know it's kind of struggling between isaac bruce and my number two tory holt and tory holt's kind of the same deal as isaac bruce you know a high character just a team guy. Man, the Rams have such a great history of, of wide receivers that were not knuckleheads. <laughs> yeah. and, and, that, and that tradition continues. But uh, I think Torrey Holt leaps to the front, uh, almost to the top, because, you know, that question about who would you love to have a beer with? Man, I'd love to have a, a beer or a six pack with Torrey Holt or, or play around to golf with him. He's just he's got a great personality. There are a lot of questions I could ask him about the greatest show on turf. Uh, I could, I'd like to talk to him about that, that run down the sideline with Oz Hakeem uh, against, was that the Broncos, I think? Yeah. Um, and, you know, Torrey Holt, man, I just love, another guy that belongs in the Hall of Fame. I think he, I think he's got a better chance than Steven Jackson, actually, because he was a member of the greatest show on turf. Uh, but Torrey Holt, he's my number two. Uh, do I really need to explain why? I mean, it's Torrey yeah. Holt. A great personality, you know, unbelievable. Uh, I agree with you. Um, that duo of Bruce and Holt, like you said, I mean, I mean, and you, then you factor in guys like Oz Hakeem, Ricky Prohl, man. It's just unbelievable. That's how you put together a wide receiver room. Um, but you're absolutely right. Those two. Um, there's no such thing as wide receiver one or wide receiver two on the greatest show of turf. That's the bottom line. And those criticisms about him being the other wide receiver, so off base, just completely off base. And he was, you know, he was that addition that sort of, I think, really electrified that other than Marshall Falk, obviously. But uh, that really electrified that offense too and just took it to another level. And, and uh to go back uh, one second on that, having a beer with uh, Tory Holt, uh, could tell you a quick story. My um, my personal assistant was in a bar here uh, in North County, San Diego. Um, this was several years back, and one of his friends said, "You're a Ram fan, right?" And he said, "Yes, I am." And he said, "See the guy at the end of the bar there? Yeah, that's Oz Hakim." Oh, and, nice. Uh, yeah, and who remember he went to San Diego State and um uh he went down and said hello, shook his hand, didn't actually have a beer with him, but did uh have a moment with him. So that was kind of cool. That's fantastic. Okay, who's your number two? So I love that San Diego State segue. Uh that's why we gotta love segments like this. I went with Marshall Fall, the perfect weapon. Yeah. So if there was anybody I would just love to sit down, I was like, yo, dude, can we just can you tell me every everything you know about football, please? Right, just you know, raise my football IQ to a whole new level. This is the guy, man. Marshall Falk. Um, what I love about Marshall Falk, man, I just love his demeanor, just his love of the game, just just quietly, he just gets it done. Doesn't talk trash, man. He just leaves it all out on the field. Um, and I really believe the what he brought to the Rams, not just in stats and performance. But in like attitude, that you know, the bottom line being, you know, get it done on the field and win. Man, think about what think about what they had. They have three future Hall of Famers, Kurt Warner, Orlando Pace, and Isaac Bruce, right? On that team when they won the Super Bowl, right? So um I think he was um the driving force be behind uh the greatest show on turf. He was just unstoppable, in my opinion, the greatest. Uh, two-way threat at that time period and arguably ever. 
Um, four straight 1,300 plus rushing yards and 700 plus ru- uh, receiving yard seasons from 1998 to 2001. No one's ever going to match that record, Mark. No one. Yeah, and what'd be great about talking to him is, is he had such a keen understanding of all facets of the offense. You know, he really got it. And if you want to, you know, make an argument for how great a running back he is, just go put on the tape of that one run against the Browns. You know, oh. that was uh, that was Gale Sayerish, if I can put it that way. It was pretty. It was pretty impressive. Yeah, Marshall Falk. And, uh, it, you know, he was, uh, it's such a perfect storm for the Rams. You know, they, uh, they trade for Marshall Falk. They draft Tory Holt. Kurt Warner walks up to Mike Martz and says, Oh, I'm, I, I, let me introduce myself. I'm your backup quarterback. And, uh, and Mike Martz being there as well. And speaking of Mike Martz, uh, again, at comfort, when I, in prepping for this with my special assistant, um, I'd love to have a beer with that guy. You know, that would be that would be something else. But yeah, Marshall Falk, um, obviously, the, I probably should have had him on my honorable mention, but I did not. And uh, my son was uh, five or six, uh, you know, about five or six when uh, the Rams won the Super Bowl that year. And you talk about and he loved Marshall Falk. That was his favorite player. And to watch those games and it was just. It was just special because it was like yeah, every man. game. And just to show you, 99 games with the Rams, Mark, 85 touchdowns. Crazy. That's bananas. That is bananas. 11,000 yeah, yards on 1,900 touches with the Rams. Um, unbelievable. And a lot of people don't know this, most two-point conversions in NFL history. <laughs> oh, really? No, I did not know that. Marshall Fogg, the only player in NFL history to reach 12,000 rushing yards and 6,000 receiving yards. Uh, yeah, he had it. He he had it all, and you know, don't overlook his his intelligence and his understanding of the offense. Um, he got it, and that's what Mike Mart said. Mike Mart said on any given play, he could tell you what every offensive player is supposed to be doing. That's how intelligent he was when it came to football. He could tell you what every player on the field offensively is supposed to be doing on any given play. Now, if, I don't know if you listened to our most recent episode. Scott Richmond shared that uh, the Rams scouting uh, department said Puka Nakua had that same ability um, at BYU when they were talking to him uh, coming prior to the draft. Uh, he could tell you what everybody was doing on that offense. So, yeah, Marshall Falk, he's your he's my number two. By the way, if yeah. every nation, Mark, and if you haven't seen it, you have to see the short on uh, Puka, uh, Puka Nakua um, doing Sean McVay. His impersonation oh, yeah. of Sean McVay is so spot on. It is absolutely perfect. You have to. You have oh, to I have it. not seen that. I got to check that out. Absolutely. Puka nails, baby. Puka nails. Let me go first on the number one because it is a guy you have already mentioned. Okay. Um, and you, you know who my favorite Ram all time is. You already know the answer to that, don't you? It's SJ39, <laughs> that guy. I mean, like he was just, he was the Rams for six, seven years. They really had so little else to be excited about. And then you'd watch these games where he would just take over. And a lot of times it didn't end well for the Rams, but it certainly wasn't his fault. And I, I, and I, and I still, you know, he's still uh, somewhat, present in the media, uh, has his own podcast, I believe, and just a great guy, you know, and another guy I'd love to have a beer with, I'd love to hang out with, and like you already said, have him over with the family for a barbecue, and uh, man, he, he's, he is, uh, without a question, my favorite Ram of all time. Maybe we need to get together in, a, in Cali and uh, invite everybody over, including Ram Nation, and we just have a, a giant sort of Ram cookout. And just talk yeah. about our players. And I've had I've had episodes and YouTube shorts, I think, dedicated to him and I've and I've pinged them on those and uh never got a response though. So maybe one day it'll happen. Okay, so who is your number one? I have no idea who who it might be. Yeah, I had no idea yet. You had the beast at number one. That's awesome. Great minds think alike, man. But um I had to go with 
I went, had to go to Eric the Great, man, Eric Dickerson. So um, I remember I w- when he got drafted, uh, I was Ram Nation. Yeah, I was starting high school. I was a freshman in high school. <laughs> right, I was uh, just about to uh, leave eighth grade. And um, he was just, man, it was just awesome. I still think, in my opinion, that red, white, and blue, number 19 SMU jersey with Dickerson, is the greatest jersey I have ever seen. Just the aesthetics of the red, white, and blue, the Pony Express logo, man. And I remember saying to myself, just like we said with Jared Verse, man, I was, there's no way he's going to get drafted. And then the Rams got him, and I was just like head over heels, man. I was like, yes. And then just to watch that rookie season. And and Ram Nation, you don't understand, I live out here in the Beast Coast. My team's out on the West Coast. It wasn't like today, man, where you got satellite and everything. You had to circle certain games. You had to hope there was a Monday night football game. We had the game against the Jets or the Giants. That was the only time, or it was one of those games where, uh, you know, you had two games of the week that you could watch. So it was really hard to actually see your team. But because Eric was so phenomenal, man, he was always on TV. They were always showing his clips. And, and I don't think there's anything more iconic for the Rams than watching 29 break through the line of scrimmage, and then just standing straight up, that running style, arms churning, the goggles. Man, it was just something to see. Uh, I mean, and one of my greatest, greatest uh, number 29 memories is when Dallas was talking trash um, in that divisional round. They called him soft. Ram Nation, they called him soft all week. They were talking trash and chirping, and he came out. And it's still the record. And he knocked out 248 rushing yards, and they beat Dallas 20 to nothing. He shut him up. I remember and, that game. Yep. And to, to see the neck roll, the the 29, the that special face mask, it was just – he looked like a cyborg, man. And yeah. The goggles. The, <laughs> the goggles. It was the all goggles. about the goggles, he yeah. Up, remember, Jerry, remember he had the, the curls? Right, yeah. we were doing his interviews. Oh man, Eric was the the and I mean we were devastated when he left the Rams. We were just absolutely devastated. But yeah. what was really great for me is I also love John Robinson. So to have Robinson wind up with the Rams and then have Dickerson wind up with the Rams and the way that turned out, and I say to this day, if Dickerson had stayed with the Rams and Robinson was there, they would have won a Super Bowl eventually because they did it without any quarterback. They had no quarterback when Dickerson played. So, I mean, I got to tell you, man, it would have been a different – at some point they would have got one because that – that with that offensive line um, that they had, which was just unbelievable, um, and then with, with ED, man, it was unbelievable. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't know what would be what's a bigger nightmare for a defensive back, uh, one-on-one, Eric Dickerson or Steven Jackson. That That's uh, – that's a tough one, but yeah, you're right. Of the Rams running backs, man. It's unbelievable. Yeah. We have three running backs that we're talking about, right? Think about that. SJ39, you got the ultimate weapon, Marshall Falk, and you got, you know, the Pony Express. There you go. Um, uh, Eric the Great. It's unbelievable. And it's and unbelievable. then I'd still make the argument, I dare I say, in his prime – Todd Gurley may have been better than all of them, but you can you can blast me in the comments for that one if you want. But uh, yeah, Eric Dickerson was the Rams for a while, and they had good teams. They I don't know if I'd call them great teams, but they had very very good teams. Couldn't get over the hump, and Eric Dickerson was the you know he was the driving force behind that offense. There's no question about it. And uh, when they did that toss student body right. Oh well, man. That was just like everybody held their breath because you knew he was going to rip one and he was going to go the distance. Yeah, if I um, if I had expanded my honorable mention list, he would have been on it. And you're talking about following games uh, on the East Coast. It reminded me back in that era, I think. It might have been a little bit later. I was in Florida visiting relatives, and the Rams were playing somebody. And the only way I could – keep up on the score was watching the CBS 10 minute ticker. If you remember yes. that. Yeah. And I, I would just sit there 
and wait for the ticker to come up for the score, the flash. And that's all I had. There was no other way to, you know. Um, oh, don't forget George Michael Sports Machine. Remember yeah. that? That was yeah. another one. So one quick thing about Eric, a couple quick things about Eric Dickerson. He owns, look at how many NFL records he owns. Ready? Most rushing yards in a single season. Most rushing yards by a rookie. Most rushing yards in a playoff game. Fastest player in NFL history to reach 10,000 career rushing yards. He, Mark, he did it in 91 games. That's bananas. Yeah. 91 games. Um, and he's the only running back ever to rush for 1,800 plus yards in three separate seasons, man. And when you watch his interviews, he's got such personality, always has a smile on his face, you know. And even, even with everything that happened with the Rams, he still is a big supporter of the Rams and involved with the organization. Yeah, you know, always has been. Yeah. For a lot of you uh, in uh, Ram Nation, when you have time, um, there's a great, great segment uh, where he and Marcus Allen talk about how they uh, really pushed for uh, changes and uh, free agency and, er uh, and everything else to really open the door for players to have a little bit more voice uh, in terms of their contracts and, and salaries. And part of that also, there's another great one where he talks about his career, where he shares his experiences of what he experienced when he was at Indianapolis. And in terms of a lot of the things that he that not so great in terms right. of things that they had, um, let's just say he he uh, had to deal with in terms of the community. So really, really interesting stuff. Um, phenomenal, just phenomenal uh, Ram uh, icon. Um, but I would definitely, definitely, you know, just sit there and just soak everything in. Yeah, and he's yeah he's obviously going to be a guy that's going to have no problem sharing. You know, he uh, he has that type of personality. Yeah, I would have had him on my honorable mention. I, I probably should have, but I tried to keep it real brief. Um, and you know, there's probably man, if I did this again, I could probably build a list of twenty guys as well. So the only guys that we both had in the top five, interestingly, were SJ thirty nine. We both mentioned Aaron Donald um, and some other guys, Jack Youngblood. Youngblood yeah. So good, good stuff. Good stuff. Um, we'll have to do this again. I have to get Ian and Tom on here and see uh, see see if see who they have on their list. And hey, uh, if you're watching on the YouTube channel, comment, provide, give us your list. I'd be interested to see. Um, but that's what we have for you paul and tom are top paul and i are top five players of all time for our rams good stuff pretty good list fun list yeah, absolutely and you know that's that's the the beauty you know when you get together and uh you know you guys love the same team and you hear about the different players like wendell tyler i could talk about wendell tyler when i was a kid you talk about going to the park and you i pretend i was number 26 with the ball oh man um but you know, Ram Nation, we want you to send us your fives, the, the ones that you remember, the ones that were iconic for you. And, um, you know, we hope we want to do the segment again, um, talk about all the Ram legends and all the Ram greats and, and a lot of the Rams that maybe people have forgotten about, you know. And you talked about a great center, one of your favorites, Mac, man. You know, that's yeah. you know, a phenomenal player. That yeah, doesn't get and there's – there's probably a, a lot of guys I'm forgetting right now at this moment that uh, if I thought about it, I'd go, oh, heck, man, should be on this list, at least as an honorable mention. Okay, good stuff, Paul. Uh, good times. And uh, let's do this again. We'll do the roundtable in a couple of days, I assume. Um, thanks a lot. And out here from Rams Up. All right. Double barrel Ram horns. Subscribe. There you go. All right. See you later.